how do you feel about writing? Do you feel that you can write any type of text or do you feel that you lack some guidance towards the subject? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you six tips for you to do a better job in writing. Let's go! Hello exam seekers, I'm Patty and today I'm talking about semi-formal writing, write better texts. The questions I've asked are important questions when you are taking one of the CELTA courses or the ICELT and the DELTA courses. After all, this is the kind of writing style you are required to use when writing the assignments. I believe it is a bit presumptuous to assume that we are ready to write anything at any time. However, I can understand where these kinds of thoughts come from. If you are following a pathway to teaching, which includes a language degree, you probably have had to write a thesis to conclude the course, or you had to write a few essays along the way. Well, these types of texts are not easy. Moreover, you need some guidance to write it. You go through so many drafts, you write and rewrite things, which, by the end of the presentation of your thesis or your essays and articles, you come to the conclusion that you are the best writer ever. <laughs> and maybe you are. I'm not here to judge, but it is important to know where you are stepping when you start a course like the ones I've mentioned. Moreover, it is relevant to know that even though your writing is great, you are still going to have to go through so many piles of drafts <coughs> So, in this video, I'm going to tell you the importance of writing well, what semi-formal writing is, and I'm going to give you six tips on how to do a better job in writing. Before I actually tell you what semi-formal writing is, let me tell you the relevance of this type of writing in your pathway to teaching. Well, at the center that I took my CELTA and ICELT courses, there were a few requirements for people to be able to enroll in either of them. One of the requirements to enroll in the ICELT course was that people were not only at a C1 level of the CEFR, the CAE from Cambridge English, which means having high level vocabulary, but also that they had taken the CELTA before. It actually makes sense even though Cambridge English does not require that. Actually, if you take a look at the Cambridge requirements for the ICELT, they were pretty lower than what you may find in some centers. These centers used to do that because they were very rigid about the texts an ICELT should be writing. In addition to that, they wanted to prepare people for the following courses and certificates. Most people, when they finished the ICELT, they wanted to take the DELTA, a diploma course, which means that they are required to write long and complex texts. Therefore, it is not a surprise that my first ICELT input session was about writing assignments. It was a session on semi-formal writing. So, if you plan to take any type of course that requires you to write long and well-written texts, like the Delta course, or any type of graduation that requires a thesis, you need to know how to use semi-formal writing. So, what is semi-formal writing? Usually, a semi-formal type of writing is more polite than an informal one. You avoid some styles of writing and some vocabulary and try to use 
language that is more specific. A semi-formal style is used for communicating with people you don't know well or who are outside your regular working relations. Some examples are letters parents send to the school principal or to the teacher, texts you write to your landlord or boss, and etc. They are similar to business letters. They are concise and informative. Now, let me give you some tips on how to write semi-formal texts. 1. Contractions. There is no room for contractions when you use this style of language. However, it is not a bad thing. If you lack in word count in the assignment, writing it is instead of it helps quite a lot. Moreover, the use of theirs, I've, etc. sounds too informal for these kinds of texts, like a conversation in real life. 2. But and and. You can use these connectors. However, when you want to sound harsher, you should avoid these two and use others, especially if you're trying to impress other people with your text. There are many examples of other similar connectors. For example, but, however, on the other hand, nevertheless, etc. And, moreover, in addition to, furthermore, etc. 3. Generalization. When you are writing an assignment, you are usually writing a report on a situation and presenting solutions. So, you should be very specific about the types of things you write. Instead of broad statements where an idea can be applied to groups of people, try to narrow the focus of the writing. It shows that you did intense research. So, avoiding using all everyone, always, probably, might, etc. 4. Passive voice. Whereas in some countries the passive voice is a synonym of formal language, in English, if you're writing something more formal, the passive should be avoided. <laughs> when we use the passive, we put the object in focus, while in an assignment, you should give the subject its purpose. They are doing the action, so let them do that. Use the active voice. Starting the sentence using I means that you actually did the job, that you researched it, and is acting on it. 5. Parentheses. A text should express precisely what is written, so avoid using parentheses. Whatever you want to say, you should say it straight away. If you really need to write a side comment between parentheses, Try using subordinate clauses and work on punctuation, leaving the parentheses as a last resource. And six, informal language. If you are writing a semi-formal text, avoid informal language. There are many ways to avoid informal language. First, you should avoid the connectors and and but. There are more formal connectors than these two, as I've mentioned before. Second, you can use synonyms of common words, which you can find at thesaurus.com, which is a great help. Another possibility is to avoid using two words instead of one, when one of them is very. For example, when you want to say, it was very cold, you can improve your writing by saying, it was freezing. Well, here's a list for you to avoid using the word very and enhance your vocabulary. These are some tips that might help you find your way to better semi-formal writing. If you are still in doubt about whether your text is well written or not, you could ask a peer to read it and help you. Usually, when I write, my impressions of the text stays intact, and I don't see mistakes I wouldn't miss when reading a student's text. Therefore, having fresh new eyes to check your text is a great way to spot mistakes. 
and the use of informal vocabulary in semi-formal writing. Another way to avoid bad writing is to use Grammarly. It usually helps a lot by suggesting improvements to your text or to tell you how to restructure your text, avoiding lousy punctuation, repetition of words, and passive voice. However, you have to remember to choose the correct style of writing when using Grammarly. I'll leave a link for you guys to download Grammarly for free. You can also upload for the premium version, but you can take it for free in the description, okay? Well, I hope I was able to clear up some questions about this subject, but let's recap. Avoid contractions, avoid using but and and, avoid generalization, avoid passive voice, avoid the use of parentheses, and avoid informal language. All right? If you still have more questions, make sure to comment in the comments below. I hope that this video was useful for you, and if you want more content like this one, make sure you subscribe to this channel, so every time there is a new video, YouTube will tell you. Also, don't forget to like and share this video so that more people can get access to this content. Okay? Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching me and see you next time. Bye-bye. Remember that knowledge is never enough. Bye-bye.